Welcome to Tech Brothers with Ahmed. Today we are going to answer this question and perform a demo. How would you disable a trigger in SQL Server? So first of all, what is a trigger? Trigger is a set of uh, statements uh, that runs uh, on some event. So we create this uh, uh, set of statements and call those one as a trigger and uh, that object will run on some event. So there are two types of trigger. We have DDL triggers and DML triggers. So DDL data definition language triggers, they will fire on events such as create, drop, uh, store procedure, maybe create a database, drop database, drop table create a database drop user and all those DDL events now the next one are DML data manipulation language triggers they will be in, uh, triggered or uh, fired on uh, uh, events such as if you are inserting a record deleting a record or updating a record from a table so let's go to SSMS and take a look right now what I have I have a DML trigger here so I'm going to perform the DML trigger um, first uh, and then we will go to DDL and we will learn how to disable them at the end. So I have created a, or I'm going to create a table called the sale person. So if you see here, I have a definition here, sale person ID, first name and last name. And uh, let's create this table in the sales, sales database. So now uh, this is already existing. Let me drop it real quick. I was testing my scripts before uh, I can start the demo so that's why I created all of them okay so now what we have here I'm going to create uh, this table once we create this table then we want to create a history table in which uh, we can uh, insert the records uh, from the trigger so if somebody tried to put the record in this uh, table and uh, we want to create a trigger that will also put a record uh, here in the sale history table. So I am creating a table called select star into DBO sale history, uh, sale person history from DBO sale person. So as there are no records in this table right now, I'm just uh, creating a table uh, by using this statement. So if there would be records here, they will be also uh, inserted into DBO sale person history. But uh, right now there, there is none. Um, so it will just create the definition. Or you can uh, use the same definition, change the table name. You can do that. So now we have tables ready. We have uh, our main table ready and uh, we have our history table ready where we can insert the records from the trigger. So they both have the same columns. They have a, a, a sale person ID, first name, last name, and uh, you can see that. So they they are uh, they are having the same columns. Now let's go and create our insert trigger. So we are saying create trigger and given the name of the trigger, and then uh, we tell on which table do we want to create the trigger. So uh, we are creating the trigger on the DBO sale person, and then uh, we want to define uh, we want to create this trigger for after insert maybe after update maybe after delete so in this case uh, i'm creating this one for after insert so if somebody try to insert the record in this table then this trigger will fire so now we have a begin part of that and we say insert into and uh, we are putting the record into history table and uh, this statement select star from uh, inserted so there are two logical tables uh, in the trigger those are called inserted and deleted so in this case uh, when um, we insert the record in the uh, dbo sale uh, person table the record will be also inserted into the inserted uh, logical table or you can call magical table or they call temp table so whatever you call this one so the record will be also inserted here if uh, you are using uh, the trigger for update or delete uh, if you will delete the record the records will be in the deleted table if you will insert the record so there would be records in the inserted as well as the records will be in the deleted so these are uh, uh, temporary tables uh, we can use only inside the triggers so i am using um, this one for inserted uh, operation as our trigger is for insert now let's create this trigger all right so our trigger is ready next part is insert a value in the sale person and see 
if uh, the trigger is working correctly so right now we don't have any record in any of the table so let's run this one so it is in one row affected and it's also telling us another row the first row if is affected uh, that's the uh, we have uh, inserted here but the second one is coming uh, from the uh, trigger now let's go back and take a look on our table the both of them should have only one record so if we can see that they both have one record that's work correctly now consider this one we are working uh, on ETL uh, job and we want to load millions of record but uh, we do not want to uh, fire this trigger one way we can just drop the trigger there and uh, load the data and recreate the trigger but we can uh, disable this trigger so how we would disable this trigger first of all the triggers are created uh, on the tables uh, so as we know that uh, from the definition we said that create trigger trigger name on this table so dbo sale person is a table where we create that trigger so we go here and then uh, we we have uh, triggers here and then we can uh, right click on the trigger and say disable that's one way uh, but we might not have a permission uh, as you and me to go here in the uh, production system and say disable trigger so one way we disable this trigger this will work fine and this will show us uh, the red down arrow as well so now that's uh, the trigger is disabled we can right click here and enable if we want but consider we have to create a ticket and in that one we have to tell uh, the DBA okay run this script uh, to disable this uh, uh, trigger or we might want to use a disable statement in the SQL uh, ETL job to disable the trigger first insert the records and then re-enable so how we will write our disable and enable uh, statement for the trigger so let's write them so we will say disable and we say trigger and then uh, we have to provide the name of the trigger and the same way what we did here when we created the tr trigger we said that create trigger and uh, trigger name of the trigger and then we said on table so here when we are disabling it we also have to tell the table because the same name of the trigger can happen for maybe another table so we want to define the table name here so if I run this one now right now our trigger is enabled and if I run this statement it will disable the trigger so the command completed successfully this statement you can use in your ETL jobs um, or a package and or you can uh, create a ticket uh, where you need to provide the scripts to the DBA who, who need to disable or enable the uh, trigger by using the scripts uh. so if you see here let's go back here and um, refresh so it is showing as the red down arrow that means uh, the trigger is disabled now if uh, I want to enable this uh, let's run this uh, record and see if it is really disabled so now we it inserted only one row it didn't insert the row in the history and trigger didn't fire so we should have two records in the first table sale person and we have only one row in the history table that worked fine now go back and let's enable the trigger so how we can enable dml trigger and then we say enable trigger and then give the trigger name and table name let me copy this one okay here once we run this one now we are in enabling the trigger let's refresh so we see that okay so the red down arrow is gone so it, the trigger is enabled now let's insert one more record and see if it is really working John and um, I'm really bad coming up with the names so I'm putting John Mike um, and insert this record now we should have three records in the first table and have two records in the history table so what we see here we can tell from here there's the trigger get fired and the record is inserted into the history table so that worked fine as we can see in the source as well as in the history table now let's go to the DML triggers so I have the script ready for you 
So uh, I'm what I'm doing. I'm saying create trigger. D uh, sorry, uh, when I said uh, let's go to DML, uh, we need to go to DDL triggers. So create trigger DDL. Um, name anything you like. I just start with DDL uh, trigger and table. So this is the name of the trigger. Then you say on all servers. So we are creating for the entire server. And then uh, for create table, I'm uh, I can put any events uh, such as create. Uh, uh, procedure uh, drop procedure create database and all that right now what I'm doing I'm only doing for the create table so what I'm saying when uh, somebody try to create the table what you need to do you need to print this statement and uh, this is the event you will be selecting so only I want to print that command text so from here we have different events so we can get the username who created the table uh, we we can have date and all those kind of different information uh, coming from these uh, event data but uh, in my case I'm keeping it simple my goal is to show you how to disable it uh, not uh, to teach here how the DDL uh, triggers um, um, can be written so yes the, you can create order table and then use these event to put the information uh, in those order table and uh, if some Somebody drop the table or create a table or drop the database and, and uh, do any DDL um, uh, statements uh, then uh, that information will be saved in those uh, uh, in that ordered table now let's uh, create this uh, trigger now the trigger is created successfully but as we said that this trigger is not on database this trigger is not on uh, the table so we will see where we will see this uh, trigger let's go back here and as we said that on all servers so that's where server objects so we are going to go to server objects and then triggers refresh it and that's where we will see our DDL trigger um, uh, and uh, it is uh, called DDL trigger table that's what the name of the trigger is so how you will disable or enable this one here you, you have a disable you can disable it but if you will disable this one it would not show you the uh, red down arrow so you can't really tell this uh, trigger is disabled by just uh, looking at it so when you click uh, get again it will give you enable so this is where you can uh, tell uh, if the trigger is disabled or enable if you enable it back now the next time when you right click here you will get uh, the disable part only so that's the way to enable or disable DDL trigger now uh, one more thing um, we were not able to script uh, out uh, we, we can script uh, the the trigger as create to drop to drop and create uh, but we were not able to script uh, the disable part or enable part of the trigger in both cases in for ddl or d uh, dml triggers so we have to write by ourselves in this case what we will be saying disable ddl trigger and then we will say enable okay right now it is the enable and uh, let me do one thing let me create a table so we can see it is working fine or not test two and i will say id integer that's it so if i will run this one it should print a, a statement here so it is uh, telling us create table dbo test two and in the message it say table created successfully that's what we are printing so it is working fine now let's disable this one disable trigger and then we give the name of the trigger and then uh, remember in the DMLs we said that disable trigger and then trigger name and uh, we had to provide on table here what we will be providing we will be providing on all servers now let's run this one sorry the, I wrote two ons now the trigger is disabled we can't really tell as uh, as from here but if i right click here now i should get the option of enable because it is disabled let's refresh it one time and now it is has enable option so that's working fine now if i create another table with three it will not give me that message but it was given me before so see if it didn't give me that statement uh, or the message so it is uh, disable now let's uh, enable now we need to copy the same script and just replace the keyword 
disable with the enable. So that's how we can enable the DDL trigger. Let's uh, run this one. So it is enabled correctly. Now if we go here and refresh so we don't uh, get the uh, wrong information. Once we refresh we will see it is ready to disable because we have enabled it. If I run the uh, statement now for create table let's say create 4. Now we will get that statement as well as the message. So it, we got the uh, statement what we ran and then we got the message as well. So these are the different ways you can enable or disable DML and DDL triggers. Thanks very much for watching this video and all the scripts of uh, what are used here in this video will be available at sqla.blogspot.com. I will create a link and also put in the description. Thanks very much and uh, see you in next video.